Hello everyone, my name is Trevor Brack here to give you everything you need to know about living in Phoenix and today we are talking about the cost of living in Phoenix. This is, well, a big reason that people are either moving to or moving away from Phoenix is going to be the cost of living and for a lot of you watching, you're probably coming from out of state and you're trying to see how does this cost of living compare to the city that you are in and really we're going city specific. We're going to stick it to Phoenix in particular because the cost of living in Phoenix is much different than Tucson, than Flagstaff and really just about everywhere across the valley so we're gonna look specifically inside of Phoenix and look at the cost of living and I'm also gonna break down some of the other major metro cities that are surrounding us in the Phoenix area so all these West Coast metro cities like Vegas like Denver like LA San Francisco all of those we're gonna compare the cost of living to in this video so let's get into the cost of living of Phoenix we'll start with housing obviously your biggest expense when moving to a city and honestly the number one reason that I hear people from moving out of state is going to be that our housing is cheaper in Phoenix compared to the other cities. So uh, the median home price is 430,000 here in Phoenix and median rent for an average house in the Phoenix area is gonna be 2,100. That's including your single bed apartment and your 10 bedroom mansion. The median rent is 2,100. For an apartment alone, it's about 1,500. That number has jumped up quite a bit. Uh, just about two or three years ago, we were seeing that number around $1,100 for a median rent for an apartment. So that number has jumped up quite a bit. And when I say people moving from out of state, people from California, California, they're going to see their median sale price at six, seven hundred thousand. They're going to see this and they're going to say, We can get a really nice house for seven hundred thousand here compared to that being the median over in California. Same thing in Denver, same thing in Seattle. The reason that they're moving to a place like Phoenix is going to be because their housing prices are so much cheaper here in Phoenix. You can live in a great family centered neighborhood for under five hundred thousand. You can't do that in those other cities. I also wanted to mention our median income is seventy two thousand. That is per household. That's also based off 2022 numbers because these kind of have a lag in what the final numbers are. Uh, so we could expect that number to probably be up uh, based off whatever inflation is for the median household income. But 72,000 and just some comparison across LA, the median is 76,000 and 66,000 in Vegas. So we're actually just four grand less than LA, which it's a lot more expensive to live in LA than it is Phoenix and 66,000 in Vegas, which we're usually very much compared to Vegas when it comes to cost of living. And actually our median income is about six grand more here in Phoenix than in Vegas. Now let's talk about utilities. This is a big question for people. It's usually once you get into the later stage of moving here that you're wondering, what is the cost of utilities in Phoenix? I'm sure your electric bills are through the roof. And honestly, they are expensive, but they're not probably as crazy as maybe you've heard or maybe you've heard some horror stories. About $180 monthly is the average electric bill. And those numbers really range. And I'm seeing about the same thing in my house. I have a 1,700 square foot house. Uh, just for your reference, I'm not trying to brag. That's nothing special anyways. But for a 1,700 square foot house in the summer months, you could expect your electric bill to be between $250 to $300 per month, and that really just depends on how much you're using your AC. If you're keeping the AC at 65 degrees, I'm sure you could see that bill get to four or $500, but in general, I'm seeing about $250, $300 over the summer months, and that's usually June, July, August, and then September as well, where it starts to, to wean off and start going downhill. Whereas in the winter months, where I'm basically not touching my thermostat at all, it's about 70 degrees outside, so I don't need my AC or my heater on, I'm usually at about $70, $80 a month for my electric bill and so that does average out to right around 180 a month so I'm seeing this exact number I can uh, vouch for that but obviously this number is going to change depending on the age of home so if you have a brand new home that's extremely energy efficient with a brand new AC unit that's cranking and doing everything well you could probably see this number come down for that same size home whereas an older home that's not insulated well with an older AC unit that number could change as well. And obviously it depends on the size of house. If you have a 4,000 square foot house, that's gonna be much more expensive than just a 1,500 square foot house. And also when you get to about 2,500 square feet and up, you start seeing two AC units per house. That doesn't necessarily change your electric bill. What that does is it helps the AC units last longer. And also they just can't handle that sort of capacity. So not necessarily like your AC bills goes up just because you have two AC units. It mostly goes up due to the square footage. So like one giant AC unit versus two smaller AC units, that's not gonna change your electric bill. Don't freak out about that. I'm sure you've seen pictures online where people have a $600 AC bill, and that's probably because they're either keeping it super cold or have a massive house. In general, $180 for your electric bill. When it comes to gas, we barely use our gas, really, so it's either gonna be your stove top or your furnace, and, and really, you're not using your furnace too much. Even over the winter months, the average is $36 a month, uh, but that does 
does kind of get skewed because a lot of homeowners don't even have gas in Phoenix. I'd say just a guesstimate, maybe half of homeowners actually have gas running to the house. It just depends on if the builder and the developer decided to bring that into the neighborhood and a lot of communities only have electricity. So you see a lot of electric stoves and the AC unit and furnace are combined and are both electric as well. So it kind of depends, but on average, you're not using much gas. So averaging 40 to $50 a month if you do have gas run into the house, uh, really just used over those winter months. So if you're using city utilities, so for water, sewer, and trash, you're gonna see around $90 a month. And obviously, again, this is this does depend on the size of the house as well as uh, how much water you're using. So if there's 10 people living in the house and you got grass in the front and back, that number is probably going to be double what I just gave to you. But in general, you could expect 90 to to $100 a month in your water, sewer, and trash bill, which is fairly low compared to a lot of surrounding states. So utilities overall, we do run slightly high compared to the U.S. average. We're about 5% higher because we do use a lot of electricity when it comes to running our ACE unit, but really not as crazy as probably most people people uh, tell you coming from out of state, it, it's not as bad as maybe the horror stories you're reading online. So talking about food, your average grocery bill is about $272 per week for a household. So that comes out to around $1,088 a month for a household. I've also read that around $280 per month per person is also a good number to go by. So if you're a single or if you're just a couple, you could expect maybe half of that. But if you're a household, which you know that guy, that could be eight people living in a house, that could be two people, the average is around 1,088 per month for your grocery bill. For gasoline, that goes into your car, not into your house. Right now we're sitting at $3.80 and obviously that's gonna change depending on when you're watching this video. When I first moved here, we were in the low twos and now, Eight years later, we're at $3.80. Uh, we tend to be maybe about 80 cents to a dollar cheaper than California. I've got family there, so whenever I drive back and forth, I do see the prices uh, and the price difference, and I always fill up on the Arizona side, and you should too. But our gas in general, I think we're uh, maybe about average across the United States, uh, fairly fairly standard and, and much better than a lot of the West Coast city. Now taxes, uh, this, this could be a pro or con depending on where you're coming from. The property tax, the average is about 0.63% of the assessed value of the home. And so this really depends on a lot of factors. Our property tax isn't necessarily a defined thing. It really depends on when the home was built, uh, where the home was built, and the size of the home. So all these factors kind of play into your property taxes. You could see the exact same size home in one neighborhood and the other one right across the street and their tax bills could be double uh, depending on when they were built and if they're in a certain school zone or if they are in a certain city district that could charge higher taxes. A lot of things factor into it. In general, though, the older homes tend to have lower taxes, and that's because our property taxes can only go up by 5% every single year. That's the max that they can go up no matter what home prices do. If home prices double, your property tax can go up 5%, and they are not reassessed when you sell your home. I know that's something that a lot of people expect and are used to. They're like, oh, their tax bill is only $1,500 a year. Well, when you go to sell it, I'm sure it's going to become five grand a year, and that is not the case here in Phoenix. Actually, our average tax tax bill for our property tax is around $1,800 per year. So you're looking at about a hundred something dollars per month for your property taxes, fairly low compared to a lot of surrounding cities. So property taxes tend to be a pro for people moving from out of state to the Phoenix area. And then also your income tax in Arizona is a flat rate of 2.5%. No matter how much you earn, you're going to be paying 2.5% on your income tax. So just some rough numbers. If you want to maybe put a guesstimate for your very basics of cost of living, if you're looking to to rent a place, you can expect to pay, pay around $2,100 a month. And yes, you can get single family homes at $2,000 a month, so that could be an option, or you could be looking at a two or three bedroom apartment for that same number. Your utilities are gonna be around $300 a month when you add everything together. So your electricity, your gas, your water, sewer, trash, all those added up come to about $300 per month for a standard sized home. And then lastly, your grocery bill is gonna be about $280 per person per month in the city of Phoenix. So you can do your own numbers depending on how many people are living there. And just to do some comparison to some surrounding cities to say, where do we stack up compared to these surrounding metro cities in the west side of the United States? And and I like to do metro cities because Phoenix is a large metro that has tons of things to do, tons of uh, businesses and a downtown area. So to do some comparisons, if we're looking at the city of Denver, our average cost of living is about 7% cheaper than the city of Denver. If we're looking at Salt Lake City, we're looking 7% cheaper also than Salt Lake City is the city of Phoenix. There are also 19% cheaper than the city of Seattle. And no shock here, we're 31% 
cheaper than Los Angeles and 40% cheaper than San Francisco. The only city that beat us in cost of living is going to be Vegas, which beat us by 3%. You can see why people compare us to Vegas often because when you're looking at a cheaper place to live than all these surrounding areas, we are very similarly priced. We have similar home prices, similar neighborhoods, all that good stuff. Uh, Vegas and us are very comparable and they are 3% cheaper to live in Vegas than we are in Phoenix. So that's a wrap up on the cost of living in the Phoenix area. I am a realtor here in Phoenix. So if you want some help moving to the area, these numbers make sense to you and it's a good fit for you to be moving over to Phoenix. I'd love to work with you. A good majority of my clients are people just like you moving from out of state into the Phoenix area. I work with them every single day. So if you want help with that move, my number and email are on the screen. Just reach out to me and I look forward to hearing from you. Stay tuned for more videos about living in Phoenix.